What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. I wanted to get a video up today. Wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I figured since all the week four preseason games were in the books as of last night, everyone played last night. I would kind of just go over anything I took away from the games or any big updates. So I figured I'd just go on Roto World, go over the blurbs and kind of give you my perspective on these things. So I'm just going to kind of run down the ones that I think are even fantasy relevant. First up, Joe Williams. His fumbling issues have become alarming. It's just another instance of how rookies are getting overhyped for no reason. So as it stands right now, anyone who picked Joe Williams in a best ball league, definitely not a good pick. He's buried on the depth chart. It looks like Matt Breida, the undrafted free agent, has been the most impressive back outside of Carlos Hyde. So he's probably the number two. There were reports yesterday that Hightower could possibly be cut. But as it stands right now, Joe Williams is not draftable. Zeke, blah, 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 a bunch of legal terminology. They keep saying it looks like he will be on track to play in week one. I really don't know what to make of this, to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know what the fuck's going to happen. We've heard reports anywhere from the six games is going to stand to the six games is just going to be moved back. He's going to play in week one. It could be pushed to the offseason, could be reduced. I really don't know what to make of it. Like, you guys are going to know as much as I am, to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and, and be, a, be a lawyer, you know. At my arraignment, note for the plaintiff, your daughter tied up in the Brooklyn basement not guilty I'd address the jury in a shack jersey all right I'm sorry I'll stop rattling off ignorant rap lines to me Zeke still seems like a risky pick because you know he could play week one week two but there's a good chance that that the suspension holds up and then in the middle of your season you just you miss Zeke again if it comes down before that even if if the suspension is ruled in like week five that means you're missing not just six games but seven fantasy weeks because the bye obviously is another week that you're that you're not getting Zeke for so to me he's still a risky pick and i'm still not going to use my first or second round pick on him i don't know i'd rather have a guy like kareem hunt or one of the second round running backs that you know you're getting for the six weeks barring health zeke is still a little risky for me andrew luck colts owner jim ursa acknowledged that he's unlikely to play in week one i feel like we kind of knew this for a while they're expected to activate him from the pup before week one so we don't know if he's going to be available for week two for week three it's just a big big downgrade to the entire colts offense to downgrade for ty i probably won't touch him until like the late third round 10 team leagues he's fallen behind all those mid-tier second wide receivers like the coopers des bryant Doug ball wins so it's just a downgrade overall overall for me frank or dante moncrief anyone else on the on the colts is basically unstartable if luck's not in the lineup and like i mentioned over my previous videos i'm not touching luck there's no reason to reach on luck in a, in a 10 team league when there's so many other quarterbacks that you could play with and, and the risk upside is just so so heavy on luck so if you're not getting him before like the ninth or tenth round don't waste your time with luck curtis samuel irrelevant more legal zeke news Corey davis will be ready for week one i still uh, for a rookie missing this much time in the offseason not getting a single preseason snap is davis is very talented so the upside is there but i think it's going to take him a little while to ease into the role which i think gives a boost to decker and rashard matthews over the beginning of the season in my trade video though i went over marcus mariota as a quarterback to kind of stay away from but trade after the first few weeks because he's got really tough passing matchups weeks two three four so that'll probably be along the time that davis gets like eased into the game and expect like a really 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 slow start if Mariota's going to start slow and they're going to place really strong pass defenses you could probably assume that davis is going to be starting very slow too so if you're drafting him and if you're like a believer in davis then don't give up on him right away that's all i'd really say there i i have him pegged probably behind decker and behind richard matthews in drafts as of right now john ross left the game with a knee injury yep uh he was kind of irrelevant in, in redraft leagues anyways in my opinion josh mccown whatever that jet situation is just shoddy d hops extension i don't i don't care like i'm not one to read into someone's extension or someone's in a contract year not really my forte i don't care it's d hop he's gonna have a shitty quarterback so i would still take Allen robinson over hopkins that's interesting Fedorowitz getting 21 mil yeah yeah blah 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 uh, they have like nothing on the on preseason week four matt forte on the on the Jets roster bubble. That's interesting because they, they own the $4 million guaranteed. So if they cut him, they're just eating $4 million. But to me, it doesn't really make sense. Like why cut him? I guess if you already have to pay him, might as well keep a veteran presence to kind of have these young guys learn from him. But we'll see if he does, you know, if he does get cut, then Powell obviously shoots up the draft board because he's looked incredible as a receiver. Give him a good load of rushing volume. Pretty much a floor RB2 with 
with high end RB two, RB one upside. <clears throat> That's all they got for me for the preseason. I don't know. There's not much to take away from preseason week four because you know the starters don't play. Let's see if uh, Pro Football Focus has anything cracking. They usually do some good recaps. <sighs> nope, they don't get up and grind like we do our big dogs. They ain't got no articles up today. That's fine. I saw Chris Carson got a lot of play time last night with Seattle. Wasn't any crazy production out of him last night statistic wise, but I did see a couple good pass blocks, which is great because that means he can run the three down roll. I'm also probably not going to update my rankings after this week four preseason games because honestly, in the top like 250, there weren't even that many people that played in the game. So if you're looking for an update on week four, my last updates, barring any crazy change of events, if like a Zeke, if the Zeke suspension gets overturned before the season starts, then I'll update my rankings and shoot them out to you guys who, who did purchase the guide. But for those, I, I'll let you know if they're coming out via Twitter. So make sure you're following me on Twitter for that stuff. Anyways, I don't know. I, I don't really have anything much to discuss more from week four. I just wanted to get something up to you know, to shoot out to you guys. So if you have any, you know, if you guys saw anything good from week four that you want to discuss, if you think there was some good takeaways, just leave a comment down below. And I'm glad to discuss because I'll be honest, I didn't watch all the games last night. It's kind of brutal watching like third, fourth string guys against third, fourth string defenses where there's barely any fantasy upside. Half those guys are getting cut anyways. So yeah, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. I don't know why you would because this is a ridiculous video, but I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.